G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. Look, we've just completed a, doing up an injection pump on a TEF20. Now, it's the first pump I've ever done on a TEF20 and we stumbled along, I found where to buy a, a seal kit um, from AgriLine over in England and I got it brought in. Um, I fitted a new diaphragm to the end. I've freed everything up. Um, I had stuck delivery valves on the top here on my pump um, so there's no way the tractor would have run with it like that so um, we've put a new diaphragm, we've freed everything up we've set it up best we know how there's a couple of adjustments that I suggest you don't undo um, mainly on the tappets and then on the rack at the top here there's a little clamp leave those as they are and you should be okay um, Keep the elements, all the elements, try and keep them in the exact same place they were with the exact same pieces. So keep the delivery valve with the element, um, with the roller, the whole lot. So from the camshaft north, keep all them together in groups um, you know, of one, two, three, four. And because you haven't got a test bench to test anything, you won't be able to test much with it. Um, I have thought of a couple of tests I may be able to do later on when I fit it on the tractor um, as in just checking the phasing of the pump and all that sort of thing but the video is not about that, it's not getting all technical with it it's, it's about when you buy an old tractor like I did the injection pump is stuck, the rack is stuck, the um, delivery valves are stuck or something like that um, this tractor we bought was sitting for 18 years and um, even though the engine turned over um, there's no way it would have pumped through this injection pump so what better way to get out and have a go for, you, for yourself um, and that's what my videos are about so follow along and <laughs> we'll stumble through it together well this is the injection pump off our TEF20 the little diesel it's a little four cylinder in line pump and I've just run around it for the disassembly I've loosened a few screws off and things just to make it a little bit quicker I'm not an expert at this pump, I've had these types of pumps apart before but I can't recall ever stripping one of these so let's get into it, we'll all learn something together eh? So the two side screws here they just open the side and you can see in here there are elements now as we turn the As we turn the crank, we can see them going up like little pistons. So that's nice and free. That's something to look for. They have to be free. They have to be... When you turn them, they should follow, follow the cam. They drop off the cam pretty smartly. But look, that's fine. We're happy with that. Now this end plate, I'll bring it around here. And there's a drive plate on the end. And we've loosened the we've loosened the nut off. We'll just pop a screwdriver each side gently. Now that's keyed on. You can see the key, so that can't go back in the wrong place. So that's a good thing. Now we have a front plate here. The front plate will hold the tension on the crankshaft, on the main crank. We won't pull it apart just yet. The backing plate. I loosened off earlier. It should have a couple of filters in here. Look at that. Look at the junk in there. Incredible. So these little filters, they're held on by a small circuit by the look of that. 
So let's get the tool. We'll just pop that circlip off. The external circlips. We'll take both of these off. Been a while since you had a bit of a clean out in this department. Looks like there's a pair. Now there's a little alloy plate there that holds the felt seal in. This poor old girl didn't have much of a chance, did it really? We'll just pop them out with a screwdriver a bit. This tractor had been sitting for 18 years that we know of. And um, so yeah, we've got a, let's get a little plate through here as well. Looks like these fellas come undone. We can't take the whole lot out, we just gotta take the take the felt out of inside the inside the rack there. So front and back look the same on these two things. On the retainers, I suppose, for want of a better word. Now we'll find our little spanner. Looks to be half inch. Well, this one's loose. And this one isn't. So let's have a look how this works. They're a solid little, a solid little bolt. Okay, so the fuel comes in this fuel pipe here. Okay, we'll take him out of the way. So the fuel comes in here. The, to get into this hole at the back there, looks like it has to get past these fellas. But they weren't tight enough for that, I don't believe. So it comes down here through the felts, then see these two little holes here? That will be what takes the fuel to the top of the head. And on the back of the pump, the cavity that they go into will be the same cavity here that the bleed screws are on. So when your fuel comes in, you have a bleed screw on the top of the inlet, that's the highest that's the highest part. And then to stop fuel getting caught up in an airlock in the top here, you can bleed it out with these screws. Now up the top, these are your delivery valves. Now keep these in the same holes. I'll just lift you up a bit and see if we can zoom in on them and see what we have. Okay, these delivery valves, there's a spring, a standard for all pumps. And this little delivery valve here, that should just come out on its own. Like, you should be able to pull it out with your fingers. Now, mine on the pump here, that delivery valve stuck. That should just pull out of there and slide in under its own weight. 
There's a copper washer here, a thick copper washer to hold that down against the end of the element. But that that's a problem. That bit there. It's a problem if I go out of focus too, isn't it? Out of, out of shot. So we'll put that up over here. We'll try the next one. So we have the spring. Once again, the delivery valve stuck. So there was no chance this tractor was going to run anytime soon until all this got looked at. So. Now that delivery valve's come out. The, this should be just a drop-in fit in that housing. And then this seal surface here, or the, the tapered surface, it's like a needle in a seat on a petrol car. That's an anti-dribble anti valve like it. Once, it. once the element pushes the fuel out through here, it pops that up against the spring. And then once injection's taken place and the pressure goes from behind here, um, this drops down and just seals it all off again. So we'll put that with that element. You shouldn't really have screwdrivers in here, but it's not. There's no other way I can see off to get them out when they're so stuck. Another stuck one. I haven't got it held very tight in the vise so I don't squash anything. No, no go. You can still see the fuel stuck in the top. So they don't do a bad job, do they? They've been sealing quite well. Go the other way. Okay, so we've got that one out too. This breather, we'll just undo that out of the road for the time being. And we'll go down this end now and we'll pull that apart. Right, we're down the end. There's a governor diaphragm in here and it should be a little plunger that takes your throttle response here and transfers it through to your rack so your rack can decide how much fuel it wants to put out. So but look at the movement in here. No way you're going to have a nice running tractor with that so looks like we'll either make that shaft and bush it or we'll, we'll do something. We won't leave it anyway. Usually when I undo these things, I smack the end of the um, screw driver with a hammer and just give it a little bit of a jar, seeing so it's going into alloy. Great fit there, it's really nice. Okay, in here we have the lever, there should be a plunger, there's the plunger. And that plunger decides how much weight goes onto the diaphragm to push your rack along. That's all very dirty. Now there's a little spring in this end. So we'll just take note of that for the moment. Now, the diaphragm housing. And there's your diaphragm spring. It's in good order. 
and where the plunger sits up here and pushes on the button that sits in the plunger like that so you've got a little bit of spring between the two now the diaphragm this has got a hole in the diaphragm there the diaphragms have a pressed steel outer on them just around here and they'll have to um, get a little bit of lever out I'll come around the other side There's a little stopper lever here. And you can see on the side, you can just see my fingers on the back there moving it. And that runs free. You can feel it run free in here. Doesn't move the doesn't move the governor, but where the spring pushes against it here, when it wants to come up to stop, you pull the stopper and it pulls the rack to the back and cuts the fuel supply off. So we'll just get this out of the way if we can. There should be something holding this on I would imagine. There's a tiny clip in there. Now to see how the stopper works, when we pull the stopper here, it pushes on the button and it will push on the end here. And by pushing on the end, it pulls the rack backwards. And so when the when the tractor's when the rack's forward and we've got throttle under it, it pulls it backwards, and then that off position. You can't pull it back anymore, that's turned off. Now down at the other end, there's a cold start, so we'll have a look at that. So this is the other end of the rack, and where the, where the rack sits through here, that decides how much fuel gets in and out. And when the rack's in stop position, there's a little button here that you could you could actually help hold the throttle open for good fuel. But when it's in stop, it won't hold anything. When the rack comes up, it'll actually hold the rack open for you. But if you pull the stop, once that rack comes back, that should actually pop out once the weight comes off it I believe anyway let's pull it apart and have a look eh? and down the end that's an adjustment screw so we're not going to play with that just at the moment because we don't know what we're doing. Once we find out how it works we'll have a crack but until then we'll, we'll leave it well alone. This is that. It's not actually on the rack. It must well, you can actually feel it there. It must actually grab a little hole in the rack. So I think that should come undone. Let's have a go at that. I'll zoom you back out a bit so you can see the whole thing. After that, I can see a couple. <laughs> I can see a couple of flats there for a spanner. 
That's worse than being a blind old fart, I suppose. Okay, and that comes out. That's the end of the rack. And this in here. So it sits up the rack, you'd have to press that in to get it on. Yeah, we'll work that out shortly. Right, I've undone the four nuts off here. I've also undone the two under the top cover. And we have to undo this screw in here to get the top cover out of the way. It looks like we don't have to undo the lever off the rack just yet. Or this little, this little rod here. And that comes over there. That's what it looks like from the back. It's a bit tight on the shaft from sitting, but you can see over this side here, there's a little return spring that should bring him back. It should be a bit freer than that, I would imagine. There's a paper gasket there. And this screw here was where that other, the, this bloke there went, that we just pulled off. And that's a little, that's a little woodruff key. And that's on the shaft. And that's what bites into your drive collar here. You see the elements just drop down a bit with the spring tension. I'm not sure we did the best thing there, but we'll just, we'll find out. That's where the bearing runs. That's the bearing on the element, so. I think we should have had, we should make a couple of shims to hold the elements up, but I'll just see if we've got enough room. See, this one's actually loose now. That looks like it might come out of the way of the, um, out of the rack, so we'll have to make sure there's a little dot there for timing on the rack. So we know that with the rack right that way, we'll just measure how far down here it is. If we measure this here, and we know that's the full off position, that will give us a reference later. Another thing by bringing the rack down you'll see this fella slides down by holding it right as far as we can in the off position that stops these elements from dropping down too and from the end of the screw from the end of the screw I'll bring it around so you can see actually see what I'm doing There's a thread that this, the thread that this fella goes on, if we measure the end of the rack to the end of that screw is 135 thou or 3.44 millimetres. Measure it up the other side.
3.04. So we've got 3.44 and 3.04. So we'll use that as a reference. And we'll bump this plate out now if we can. Okay, this setup here, I've got my pliers all in holding the weight off the springs. So I can drop my cam out. That looks okay. Alright. Now that's the roller, the cam follower. That follows the cam. Now I'm not going to adjust these. I'm going to leave them exactly where they are. That'll work the amount of travel as the plunger goes up in to the element. So we don't want to touch them and we want to keep them in the same holes. This is a housing upside down and the reason it's upside down is when I had it up the other way I made a mistake and one of the elements popped out of the back which that's an element there and there's a little there's a little ramp on there and that decides how much fuel gets in each stroke sort of thing so we'll go through all that once we get it all done but but yeah, I found it, I should have tipped it up the other way. Now, with the elements coming out, I'll try and get this close to you if I can. There's a tiny little scratch mark down here. And that has to be matched with this bloke here when it goes back in. And oh, I'll be good to be able to see. There's a tiny little scratch on the bottom here, too. So if you line those two up, and they'll be on the side where this is, so that the operator could see it when it was getting assembled, you can't go too wrong with that. But keep these in the right one, two, three, four where they've always been. I love this stuff, hopping into things I don't know much about. <laughs> okay. We have Welsh plugs down here which they used for putting all everything in as a, as a unit. So I do have new ones of those so I'm going to knock those out. zoom out so you can have some indication on what I'm up to and that's all the wealth plugs they're just a just a little light brass one I was having trouble getting this end out and I found in the end just put a screwdriver handle and that got that out. Now there's a seal there, a rubber lip seal that we'll have to replace and a gasket around the outside here. Now these silver fellas here, they are what this plunger goes up in and near the outer sleeve on the element so they have to be in the exact right position and how they do that is 
there's a, these little screws on the side here. Now, you'll notice that that was loose before. All these do is go into a little slot, I believe. From memory, anyway. And there's the screw with a little with a little flat on it there. Oh, not a flat, a little machined surface. And that will just hold the element from turning. See the where the delivery valves come down from the top, they come down you have the holder that comes down there and seals, you have your delivery valve and then when you screw this into the housing oh, dropped it. that holds it in position that way the screw holds it in position that way So once again they're matched as a set with oh, the dirt on here, that probably won't go in because of the dirt but um, they're a matched set and there's probably a little hole here somewhere, if I can remember rightly. Oh, it's actually right up the top there. It's in here. It's where the fuel gets in. I don't know if you can see that. You can see the little triangle, or little, the little ramp here. Depending on where the rack is, when it opens up, it decides how much fuel comes in the hole. And the way it goes. So. Anyway, we'll try and get it all clear. We'll clean it all up and try and get a nice clear message out. It'll help me no doubt, no doubt to understand the pumps better and we'll just work along from there. Right, now we just have the rack left into the housing. So, what's holding that in? Appears to be this screw here. That's a screw similar to the others with a little notch. So we can presume on the back of the rack here, there's a notch to stop it from coming out. The rack's in good order. Okay, we'll clean everything up and then we'll come the fun of putting it all back together and getting it working. Well, here we are. I've spent ages cleaning parts. Now, I have all the elements over there in their groups. We haven't separated them at all. However they were, they still are. The housings have been sandblasted and blown dry and cleaned and I actually got onto a, a seal kit for this pump. Now I'm in Australia, I had to import that from America, I'm sorry from England. So I got onto it. This diaphragm I stock at queenslandtractorspears.com.au in town here and we spent a lot of time cleaning up, a lot of time fiddling around with it. I made up four of these little forks to help hold the elements in or the rollers in later. Um, I've cleaned them and deburred them and our cleaning process was bead blast the big parts there. All the other parts got cleaned in a, a pot of petrol then they got taken out and dried. Um, we blow dry them with air then they got another clean with brake and clutch cleaner to make sure they were nice and clean again so I'll screw it with that and then blow dry again and look we've got most of it ready to go follow along and we'll try and well we'll try and get it back together working nicely I had to do a lot of research on this I hadn't had this exact pump apart before so it's a week since I pulled it apart and I've done an awful lot of reading and I've um, gone back through my tech books from where I did this many years ago and look we're on top of it I'll just try and show you 
the layman with a little grey Fergie or a little TEF Fergie how to run through your pump without buggering it up and without costing you a lot of money. First thing we're going to put together is uh, the excess fuel rack. Now it sits on the end of the pump, on the front of the pump there and there's a little button that you press to give yourself a bit of maximum fuel. So what it does is when you push the button in and you have the throttle in the open position it sort of goes up and holds the rack open. Now when it's running normally it just sits inside there so so what I've done, I've cleaned all this up, bead blasted it, done the whole bit. So we just need to put a little bit of oil in there. Put the spring in. Now the rod has a little locator for the spring. Now at this stage, the flat on the shaft you can see the flat on the top there that goes to the top where you can see it and the reason for that that's nice and free you can feel that nice and free in there and the reason for that is that we have to have room to put this screw in the lock nut so so you have the screw the spring washer and the lock nut now on mine just so I didn't change any adjustments Mine came out 13 threads. That's just where it started there. the nut where it was and we've just come back up to that locked position so we just nip that up that's nice and free in the bore the pin inside there feels good it's nice and straight so we have a small gasket that's supplied in the kit we've cleaned the plate up two small screws now, on the pump we're not going to put anything on the gaskets if we do it would be a small a little wipe of grease but the kit's a good kit we um, it seems to have a lot of stuff in it wasn't cheap. I think it cost me $120, $30 to get it over here. So. This screwdriver is just a little bit big for this job it feels. I've buffed all the threads up and all that. So there, the coal start. All together, we'll sit it over out of the way. Okay, the next job is put the rack in. So we've cleaned the rack up. We've put an oily film on it. Now we have to bring it down until we can just see this slot here. That slot there has to go right down into the hole there. And once that's done, this will be a little screw. There it is. I had it ready now, I couldn't find it. There's a little screw that goes in and that looks after the, the 
travel of the rack. There's a fibre washer on there. So we just screw him in. are quite lined up. Make sure he's free. And nip that up. So now we have limited rack movement. the screws there holding the rack in so it can't go anywhere. Right, well, I'll just run through the procedure of doing one element and then all the rest will, will remain the same. Now we probably should have a little chat about the elements. The, now this screw here that's on the top of the um, well your adjustment for your rack don't undo that leave that tight that actually sorts out the um, whether you're all even on your rack whether each element works the same now the roller for the rack of the roller for this element I'm sorry um, don't adjust that screw there we know this was okay so what happens is that's your element it sits at the front like that. That's a lovely fit. And when your element goes up and your cam pushes on the bottom here, this actually sits on the bottom through there. And if you have this screw too long, this will go up and poke through the top there and it'll hit on the bottom of the delivery valve holder which is this fella here and of course it's screwed down tight so you'll get a bind up and something will break so so if you leave this adjustment there it should be okay now this adjustment here not only does it set the travel of this but it also sets the phasing of the pump so when you get number one firing on a four cylinder, um, say it's one, three, four, two. So number one will fire first, then number three will fire 90 degrees later, four will fire 90 degrees after that, and then two will go 90 degrees after that. So if they're firing out a little bit, you can adjust this just a little bit. And I've read over the week that well, I've been looking at these pumps and trying to work out how to explain everything clearly that one full turn of this screw, it's a metric thread, one mil pitch, um, one turn of this screw will change the phasing six degrees. So one flat is one degree. But when you look at the... When you look at the um, cam lobe here, That'll tell you your firing order. This goes that way. So you have one, three, four, two. So they're all 90 degrees at, apart. Now, that there, if they're slightly different, you can just adjust this screw a little bit so that this completes its injection a little bit sooner or starts a little bit sooner or later depending on what you need to do so so for the job that we're doing here which was just resealing it and this isn't a this isn't a video on this is all about these pumps this is just how to get your old Fergie going um, and hopefully at home on the bench not not anywhere else so so try and leave that adjustment where it is leave this adjustment where it is do not undo that screw do not undo that and we should be pretty close to being correct. Now, the elements, don't mix them up. They're a matched set 
and when you drop a little bit of oil on these this is just light engine oil it just holds in there it'll hold in under its own weight if it falls out it's too far worn now the tolerance on these is that close or that critical that if you take this piece and hold it in your hand for a short period of time chances are just the heat from your hand will make that hard to fit up there and I haven't held it long enough but that that's definitely firmer so so try and keep everything in the same same place now this little delivery valve this is one of the stuck ones I have to deal with it yet that's a on the front surface of your delivery valve that's a lapped surface and that just sits down tight and with your delivery valve holder coming down the top here that holds pressure on that so you can see why you don't actually want that bashing up on that and breaking something so to start off with we'll clean this element up and if you remember the screw went to the front so this element comes down from the top and goes right down as far as you can push it then you put the screw in and because there's a slot in the element you should still be able to just move your move your element just a very small amount so I'll clean this up and we'll come back right I've finally got the element in and you can see this the head of this screw is just under the surface there and that's with the aluminium washer there and the lead pallet there is just um, just around the right size there too so I'll just make sure we're nipped up nice and firm doesn't have to be over tightened and just have slippery hands at the moment yeah, that's plenty tight enough okay now to know that you've got it right that element can still move up and down a little bit and that moves up and down a little bit in the groove so you know you're pretty good now on the rack there's a center pop mark here and a center pop mark down the other end and when your rack's in the central position that center pop mark is just outside of the rack let's see if you can see it there but it's a little bit hard to see but there's there's a center pop mark there another one here and when you bring them just level with the thread at the end there level with the thread um, that's the central position for the rack now because we haven't undone these we actually have to bring this up and down over the element now once we know the element is in the right position we know the rack's in the correct position we can drop this down and we know because we have teeth on the rack here this is in the central position I go for the central position here now if you remember when we pulled it out we did a measurement up in here so to see if we're in the right groove or not and we're on the right track we should be able to measure that with our verniers so on ours I think it was 3.4 millimeters so we'll just zero the Three point two one side and three point one. So three point two. Three point two. That's as far as a rack can go. 
Now, when we measured the first time, it was 3.4, so we 0.2 of a millimetre difference. So, just to check, if we bring that round one tooth, take it as far as we can, we're down to 2.2 millimetres. Now if we bring this fella back, one, Three point actually three point four, which is what we had the other day. So three point three six. So that's where we need to be. So once we line up the two dots here. This is just off centre, just a little bit. That's where we need to be. So, look what I've done, just for ease of use, I've put a white mark on the side with the line on it. There's a matching line on the element holder here. So we'll go back to, we have the washer on. I'll just check that the washer's on still. Yep, there it is there. There's a, there's a washer like that, there. Now we have to hook that up through here, then drop him down to pick up the element. Control valve. You can just see, you can just see the white there. And that rack should line up pretty close with the whole lot. Okay, now the roller, which is a cam follower. We'll drop a little bit of oil around him. Now he's got a locator, so he can only drop down one way. So So he drops down and his little lug holds him the right way. Now I have a screwdriver here. Now this is just the handle on one of those screwdrivers you can change the ends around in. See if I can get all this to line up nicely. He's not quite lining up. Just feel that engaged. So I'll try, try and push that element right down as far as I can. And what I've done there is I've got the washer, I've got it down far enough that I can actually slide the fork in to hold it all in place now. So there's no way that can go anywhere. So it's engaged. That's turning freely. 
just in the spring there I can see that my my white timing mark here is lined up you can just see it there okay I'll put the other four in and we'll come back by the length of time it took me to do this I'm expecting it to take a while right here's a seal you can see the spring to the oil which in this case the oils in the crankcase that's a firm fit in there the bearing. There's a fat side and a thin side on the bearing. We have to have the, the open side so the other bearing can come in. Make sure he's all the way home. And we'll blow him dry. We'll blow him, make sure there's no dust or swath or anything like that in the way. Right, we've got some grease and all on the end cap here. We've got the gasket on. Now if we slide this in there gently, that picks up the bearing. And hopefully, We can come in through, through the back there. Okay, that's in. Now the cam, the cam lobes are in line with the holes, so we know we're going pretty well there. Okay, we'll do this end up. Okay. So the cam's sitting in, you can see the lugs lined up with the holes. That's taken a bit of a beating, hasn't it? Now, this is the same, can only go one way. Just put a bit of grease on him. Now that's the way I think it would be. Here. Now to get this on I'm going to have to push the cam down with my finger, you can see it wants to stick up there. As we come over to each one, you can feel each element coming along. Then, as that comes out, that should just slide away. Okay, 
Now this one looks higher, but that's just because we on that stroke. So that's the top of the stroke, and the, the element is right down. Yeah, I'm not sure you can see that the, the element is just below the top there, so that's all we wanted on them. Now I should be able to see. Yep, there's the groove, there's the stop groove. Yep, the element lines up with the port there, so that's good. I'm pretty pleased with that. Might help it seal, I don't know. <laughs> If you've got to rely on grease to make your gasket seal, well, you haven't done the job real good. Okay, back again. the screw for the top, the big tapered one. So this housing, this is your stopper mechanism. So, so this housing when you pull the stopper, this actually pulls your pump into, into stop. spring washers and a couple of nuts and put on the bottom here and we should be okay. Right now if you remember we had a spring and a plunger and the plunger stuck in the back here and when the throttle um, or when you pull the throttle lever which is this little fella here that worked on the back here which in turn pushed on the back of the diaphragm pushed on the back of the diaphragm there and that gave your rack a position depending on how much vacuum was in the back here holding against the diaphragm so at this stage we're up to popping the diaphragm on now it doesn't look like there's a right or a wrong way for the diaphragm that I can see So the diaphragm just sits on there, there's a small washer goes on, and then there's a split pin. Okay, we've put the diaphragm in, now we're just sitting up, sitting up out in the vise, and we need to put this housing on that's got the throttle plunger and all in it. So. On this one we need to pop the spring in and make sure the spring locates into the diaphragm and we have to hold against there while we put the end cap on now by tightening the end cap when we do tighten it 
that should press hard on the outside of the diaphragm and that'll make a seal from one side to the other. So we just need to hold a bit of pressure there at the moment to hold the diaphragm spring in place. Now we do this up evenly from left to right a little bit make sure it sits there good At the moment we just take them up firm until we get them all started and This pipe goes to the top, that's for the vacuum from the inlet manifold, Venturi. Alright, we'll tighten that up and we'll come back and drop some delivery valves in. Now when we look inside the housing here, I've had this on and off a couple of times, working it all out again. There's a little bead there that needs a bit of a smack and that's just the lead to hold that screw in. That's the one that holds the rack in so we've just flattened the lead out there a little bit. Now this rubber, that's what I'd forgotten to put in. The other one didn't have a rubber, it just had a bit of gaskety stuff when I went back to have a look. So the rubber goes in or the cork I'll put the best ones down this side other one and that seals off the side of the felt. I was looking at the felt thinking I wasn't sure but now we are. I'm not sure what size these screws are. I've gone and got a handful of spanners and they're not half inch, they're not 916. The half inch doesn't fit on, the 13 doesn't fit on. So for today they're shifting spanner size. So that goes down over there. This one fits in the down there. And put the circlip on with the sharp side of the circuit to the top. Oh, get in there. Right, and that should be a good filter. Any fuel coming down in through here has to get in through there. We have a nice gasket that sits there. And a couple of screws here. And that looks okay. Just making sure it looks even all the way around the gasket. screwdriver and give it some.
be nice to have a proper bracket to do this on but for this one pump this is the one we're learning on so that will do it now this fitting here it just sits tight onto the housing and onto the fuel pipe the fuel pipe comes along like that so in the kit there's a new copper washer top and bottom for there this little clip there's a bracket for the pipe to go on with a little clip there And we don't want to do this up too tight for the moment because I'll, I'll probably pop this off to help bleed it later on. But we'll just, just hold him for that. Alright, now to the delivery valves. The delivery valves, they do a couple of things. They, once the pressure's gone off from the injection, they, the pressure, the spring pushes against here and they shut to stop any dribble on from the injector and they also keep the line primed and things like that so you make sure it's really clean that's a lapped surface a mated surface against the top of the element we have a new copper washer in the kit and we'll see if we can get it to push down there seems a little bit firm so it's ever so gentle and I might screw that down Try and screw him down just a little bit before we um, put the spring in. Right, that's on its way. back out, put the spring on, and bring him back down. Now I'm not going to tighten these right up for the moment. Once I get the tr on the tractor, which I, I can't get it on at the moment, we haven't even got a proper fuel tank for it, but we'll put it down there. These need to be tensioned to around 30 foot-pounds. Um, and when we put the, the back on the tractor which won't be for a number of weeks um, we'll actually spill time it with this fella here so we won't um, do these up tight at the moment but we need to take them off so all of them are the same just the delivery valve with the with the little um, new copper washer on it okay we've just put a new key in there there's a new key that comes with the kit now this can only go on one way there's a, there's a washer and a nut there's a spring washer and a nut on that one I'll just nip him up not all the way just for the moment and the pump is just about done what I like to show you though is if I bring it down here now 
Now we have this housing goes on the back here and there's a dowel on there and it goes on here with the with the lever up and it can only go on one way and but because of the movement in here I'm actually going to bush that before we put the pump back on I'm going to make a new shaft and bush that so we'll forget that for the moment that's just a case of bolting that on normally which is no big deal but what I'd like to show you is you have the stopper at the back here and that pulls it that way and you can see the spring tension comes up against the back here and the governor beats that so if I actually suck on the vacuum line you can actually see that move so that's a good sign we know that it's working quite well there so look that's about it for this um, we have a side cover here to put on we'll just put that on temporary at the moment too I believe when I'm spill timing it later on I want that off and just have a look and see what's going on with it all so we'll just tighten that up <laughs> the camera's just a tad in the row and the only other job we need to do apart from rebushing the back here is pop the tap in which is the drain tap now this drain tap I'll just lock tight that in and we need to pop these Welsh plugs in so these Welsh plugs we'll put a little bit of sealer around each one as we go in just a little bit of Loctite 515 we'll go from there okay look all we're going to do is just put a little smear of aviation around not much just spread it out a little bit now these little cups here they go in that way I'm just using the flat of a little socket just under the surface this hole here we're going to fill it up with oil until it just becomes level with the bottom there like that popping back over here oh, a little bit of sealer on the drain every so often because it will dilute with fuel apparently it's just turning the handle it's not doing any good really
Okay. Look, that's about it. That's all we can do. Um, yeah, I can't think of any more we can do apart from this fella here, but like I said, I don't want to do that just yet. The, um, we'll just check the pump goes round and round again, or still. Yeah, to put it back on, I had it sitting up on the top of the lobe on number one, so that's all I need to do. And this, um, this dog clutch here should line up there. That all seems to be working. Well, there you go. That's a run through this inline injection pump on the TEF20. Now, we stumbled along through it. That's, that's the first one I've ever done. And look, going back together, I did a couple of things twice and three times, just, just checking how it worked and making sure I, I did it okay. Then the odd time I'd leave a part out and I'd come to it and I'd think, oh boy, back together again. So, um, so when I when I've edited it all together, I've I've tried to get a full um, full picture of what might help you get your tractor going. Um, the big diesel shops will probably look at this video and think, "Oh Christ, what's he doing?" But um, the idea is to get your tractor going. Um, if you've bought a tractor and the rack is seized, or you, know, you have a dicky element in it, or something like that, you can actually pop the pump off, sit it on the bench and have a go on your own. Um, not to say you want to be able to fix everything on your own, but, um, you know, have a go at least. The, um, the kit for this pump I actually bought off AgriLine over in England and got it shipped in. The diaphragm, there's a Sparex number that we sell all the time. Um, I'll have to find the number and write it in here somewhere. But, um, but look, have a go. There's a few little tricks that I had to learn along the way, you know, like making these. Now, I made these out of 0.8 mil. If you went to 1.2, they wouldn't bend, and I think it would be a better idea. Um, so I'd, I'd change that if I did it again. The seal kit that from AgriLine is quite com comprehensive. It's, it's a good thing. Um, and, yeah, look, have a go. Um, if you've got a little bit of mechanical aptitude, it's, it's worth worth having a crack at it. Um, I've probably pulled a few things with this video. I've probably pulled them apart, back to front and upside down, and all that sort of thing. And, and I still have to torque these to 30 foot pounds once I get my spill timing on the tractor. But for the moment, I have to rebush this end plate. And apart from that, there's nothing more to do that I know of. So. So anyway, have a go. See how you go with it. Um, put some comments down below. If you've done it, or you know how to do a job easier than I've just stumbled along here, um, put it down in the comments. I'm not too old to learn something anyway. So anyway, that's all we got for the moment. Please subscribe, like, comment, and we'll catch you later, right? Eh?